I may be a little, a little hot. I've always said the sound equipment is just made so you can hear better, not blow your eardrums out. I mean, I mean, it's happy to be alive on the 4th of July again almost. Lived another year. Isn't that right? We're blessed. We're alive. As long as we're alive and kicking, we can work with it. That's when we run checked out. That's when we can't do nothing with that, can we? I tell you what, I'm glad to be in. You know, it's good to have a good church to go to. I grew up, we didn't have a church to go to. And and me and my wife married. And I said, you know what? We're going to get in church. We're going to live right. And we've been doing it now for 32 years. And uh, I, I don't know. I wouldn't, could think of anything else better to do than to go to church on Sunday. It's just like getting up and eating breakfast or eating supper or whatever. It's just part of our lives, you know serving the Lord, living for him. I love to come and sit where you're at and get fed. You know, I always come anticipating what's God going to talk to me about today. What's he going to maybe point out in my life today I need to work on or I don't know. I always got excited. I brought my notepad. I was ready to hear from the word of the Lord. We're going to look today from the book of Hebrews chapter 4. In case you don't know, the book of Hebrews in the New Testament, toward the end, chapter 4, and we're going to read from verse 14. <coughs> y'all make me nervous, y'all too quiet. Amen. You know, I didn't know this till we got in church years ago, but the Bible says to make a joyful noise. It does. I was like, that's in the Bible? Uh, yeah. It says also, oh, clap your hands, all you people, and shout with the voice of triumph. In other words, you make a noise like you've already gotten a victory. I'd like, that's in the Bible? Because what few times I'd ever been to church, everybody just kind of sat there real quiet. You know, if anybody made any too much of a move, the usher was going to usher them out. You know, they disrupted the service. But, but then they said, yeah, that stuff's in the Bible. Make a joyful noise. That means if we wanted to, we could take a, a, a pot or a pan and beat the bottom of it and make a noise. It's amazing no matter where you go in the world, they know to either beat a stick on the ground and make some kind of noise for their creator. Why don't y'all got your Bibles? You're going to read with me Hebrews 4 and 14. It says, seeing that we have a great high priest that is passed into the heavens, Jesus, the Son of God, let us hold fast our profession. For we have not a high priest which cannot be touched with the feeling of our infirmities, but was in all points tempted like as we are, yet without sin. Verse 16 says, Let us therefore come boldly under the throne of grace that we may obtain mercy and find grace to help in time of need. It says to come boldly before the throne of grace. I want to talk to you a little bit today before we go home about never leave empty-handed. I don't know about you all, but I come today to receive something. I want to leave different than the way I came. How about the rest of you? I don't want to leave the same way I, I came. Lord bless you. You can be seated. We've already prayed this morning probably a dozen times. The Lord spoke to us. I don't know if you realize it or not, but God wants to be good to you. Matter of fact, the Bible talks about he wants to give us the desires of our hearts. I don't know about, I don't want to leave the day empty handed. Right? How many of you go to Walmart to just walk around? I don't, I don't know. I, I go in there to buy something. You know, I've got something on my mind. You know, men and women are different. I go straight to what I'm going to get and I go straight back to the register and out the door I go, 
where a woman's going to hit every aisle in between there, and if it's a double aisle, she's going to hit it twice. Amen. Isn't that the truth? She's going to shop all the way down there to where she's going and all the way back, and I'm not like that at all. I, I come to, got my mind on what I've come to get, what I need, and I'm going to get it and get out of here. But you know, we come to church, we ought to come needing something from God, you know. We ought to come and expecting God to do something in our lives, to work some kind of miracle in our lives. The Bible talks about us getting on the potter's wheel and him molding and making us into a vessel unto honor. I don't, I don't know, I don't want to get cheated. You know, the devil would love to rob us here today and he would like for us to sit here and leave just like we came. You know what I'm saying? He really would. And if we're not careful, we'll jip ourselves because it's so easy to say, you know what, I really don't want to participate in the service. I'm just there as an observer. Mm. You got to ask yourself that question. Are you a participator or are you just an observer? Are you a window shopper, you know, here today? You got to be careful because if we don't know what we come for and what we're trying to to get out of God, out of the Lord, we can be lost and undone and not realize it. Do you know to be lost is a state of not really knowing where you are? Or you may think you're in one place when reality you're somewhere else. In other words, you may be going south on I-95 to go to New York or north on I-95 to go to Miami. That's called being lost. You don't know where you're at, where you're going. But this morning, we should all come here to receive direction from the Lord and him to mold and make us here today and receive what he has for us today. I don't want to leave just like I came here. I want to leave changed. I want to leave, I want him to add some value to my life before I leave here today. I want to leave inspired and excited and that hope that he gives us that he wants to walk with us now just like he did with his disciples and be our friend that sticks closer than a brother. But you know, we've been blessed with such great freedoms today here in the United States of America. We can come and worship the Lord and we don't have to worry about anybody coming in with machine guns or anything. I remember Brother Tekla Marion from Ethiopia in the early 90s told the story there, they were worshiping the Lord and the authorities came in and they had a newborn baby and they threw his child out the window and killed it because they were worshiping Jesus. I don't know, I couldn't imagine them coming in and taking my newborn child and pitching it out the window and taking its life and me continuing on worshiping Jesus. I believe I would be wondering, where are you at, Lord, in all of this? But what we got to understand is this life is just a temporary place. Including that baby, it just kind of got advanced onto the next level where we're hoping to get to one day. He even talked about Brother Tekla Marion did years ago. Y'all don't know him, but he was like I said, from Ethiopia, and it said the authorities and the people, the witch doctors and all there had come against the people, and they had come into church and killed a bunch of people there and piled them up outside and said they began to pray, some of them did, and they came back to life. And they said that the people that took the lives of those innocent ones in the church began to burn with searing heat. Now, he tell, told this story. Now, I remember this. I've met him personally, and he was telling this in 1993. He said they all of a sudden, it was like they caught on fire, but you couldn't see the flames, kind of like alcohol burning. You know, you can't see it burning at all, but you know it's there. And said those people literally that had killed God's people or tried to kill them caught on fire and burned up right there and was tormented in the dirt. And I'm thinking about the freedom that we have here today. We can come worship the Lord. We got the freedom to own a Bible. We can read it out loud. 
Could you imagine if the neighbors started complaining and said, you know, it's Sunday morning and y'all making a lot of noise in that church. We can hear the music all the way through the walls and we really don't want to hear that music this morning. And the police could come and tell us, you need to shut that music down. It's too loud. You're breaching the peace. But that hasn't happened, has it? We gather here every Sunday and we can lift our hands if we want to. Matter of fact, the Bible tells us, oh, that men would lift up holy hands without wrath and doubting. That's all part of our worship is lifting our hands. That's acknowledging him. That's that freedom that we have. But if we don't use the freedoms we have, we'll lose them if we're not careful. We'll end up leaving empty-handed. We'll end up leaving worse than we were than we, when we came. I've seen people do that before. They get to looking at other people in the church and judging them. And church will always have a couple of hypocrites in there. Matter of fact, I've probably been one a time or two, you know, if you really want to be honest about everything here, you know. I don't know any of us that's got it all together, you know what I mean, and keeps it all together, you know. We all need the grace of God, just like he said, we need to come boldly to the throne of grace, you know what I'm saying? But if we're not careful, we can get our eyes and minds on other people or somebody's child, maybe it's down on aisle three here, it's aggravating somebody and, and they're, you know, I can't believe them youngins won't sit still. You know, them parents, you know, I'm just glad the kids are here. You go down that Sunday school hall in there and you see scuff marks on the floor and every once in a while one of them will take a crayon and mark on the wall and I'm glad. Somebody said, why are you glad they mark it on the wall? That's God's house. I said, but that means kids have been there. That means somebody's been here worshiping the Lord, learning about Jesus learning about the freedoms that we have that we can exercise here this morning as we in celebrate our independence here as the United States of America. Listen, God tells us that his gifts and callings are without repentance. He doesn't ever turn his back on us. He wants to bless us. He wants to mold us into a vessel that he can use. He wants us to be the hands and the feet that he uses to reach this lost world. He wants us to go tell other people maybe that's in a church somewhere where they're all rigid and can't move and they're afraid to lift their voice, but yet something deep inside of them is wanting to cry out. It's amazing when you're in a church service and the presence of God comes into the place and you get this knock comes up in your throat right here. It affects you emotionally. The reason it does is your spirit recognizes, your soul, if you will, recognizes its creator. Romans 8 talks about that we make these groanings and utterings that we don't understand and we don't know what's going on exactly, but what is going on is my creator just came into the room and my spirit and soul recognize that. But you know, the devil doesn't want us worshiping. So years ago, our ancestors, that came over from England and Ireland and all these different places. From over there, everything was rigid. It had to be done in order and just like this. And they took away the freedom of worship years ago that to worship the Lord was just standing there, I guess. I don't know, holding a songbook. I never did quite figure that out. They would say, turn to page 312. Let's all stand. And everybody stood there like a dunce holding the Bible, holding the, the, their songbook, singing a song. And in time as they sung the last verse and the piano struck the last key, they all sat down real quick, you know. And, and they left the same way they came. I don't want to be like that. I don't, I don't know... I, I need more than that in my life. I, I want to exercise that, that thing that's down inside of me that's like fire shut up in my bones. Jeremiah talked about. You know, it's got to come out. I want to worship him in spirit and in truth. You know, that's what he told that woman at the well, at Jacob's well in John chapter four. He said, there's going to come a day when the true worshipers are going to worship the Lord in spirit and in truth. I don't know if y'all know it or not, but just doing this right here isn't worship.
Could you imagine if you and your wife or husband had that kind of relationship? That y'all never interacted? He comes in the house from work, doesn't say a word. And you don't say a word. Y'all sit down and eat supper and you still don't say a word. You go to bed, you don't say a word. You get up, you don't say a word. But yet, you married? What kind of relationship is that? God's wanting a relationship with us where we talk to him. And we, you know, not only do we want to worship him, but we want to praise him for what we have. Thank you, Jesus, that this morning I can come down on 7 Berkeley Street and worship the Lord. And if I get something deep down inside of me that wants to raise that hand and say, oh, Lord, I love you with all of my heart here today. I'm gonna bust if I don't say something. That I can do that without a usher walking me out the door or people going, my God, wonder what's going on with them. Lord, have mercy. I'll never forget, I had a pastor one time tell me, he said, I, we were talking about the Holy Ghost. And then, you know, that's kind of wigs people out, you know, a little bit, at least it did me anyway. You know, I, I wasn't real big on that stuff. You know, I don't know, that hocus pocus type stuff, I thought called it. And, but I was witnessing to him about it and telling him about my conversion or whatever you want to call it, you know, that when I first had been introduced to the Spirit of the Lord and he began to talk about, he said, yeah, he said, you ain't going to believe what happened last Sunday. He said, we had Sunday evening service and there was a new family in the church. He said, and right in the middle of me preaching, he said, this new family, we gave the invitation or the altar call, whatever you want to call it. And, you know, most people ain't going to get up and come down to the front because they done done something bad if they did. You know what I'm saying? They must, they must be bad sinners. They went to the altar today, you know, my Lord, you know. But he said this new family came down to, the, down to the altar and got down on their knees and began to worship the Lord and the, the spirit came over them. He said half the church got up and left. He said, but you know what I did? He said, I got down there beside them and started praying with them and said, you know, I could tell that they had been overcome by something. When I say overcome, I don't mean something took control of them, but they, something was influencing them. Something was speaking through them, okay? And he said, I got down and began to worship the Lord beside them, and I, what, but just a few minutes, and that thing came over me just like it did them. And he began to talk about his experience with getting the Holy Ghost inside of him. You know, I'm gonna be quite honest with you here this morning. You wouldn't have convinced me that God was alive and real without it. I'd be drinking beer out at the lake right now because I'm just telling you, You'd have never convinced me he was real. I, prove to me that this book is real and it's not just a bunch of fables. How do you know it's real? Till you come down here and you meet God for yourself one day and you're filled with the spirit like they had in the scriptures, like they did in the book of Acts chapter two and chapter eight and chapter 10 and chapter 16 and chapter 19 of the book of Acts when Luke pinned down where people were filled with the Spirit. We're so blessed here today that God is not an Indian giver. No pun intended here if anybody's an Indian, okay? That's just an old adage. An Indian giver will take back what they've given you. God's not going to do that here today. He wants to bless us with joy unspeakable. The old prophet Nehemiah talked about the joy of the Lord was their strength. We ought to come to church expecting, excited about what God's going to do. All things are possible with him, but with us, we're limited. But with him, all things are possible. In other words, if I walk with him uprightly and, and love on him, chances are I'll never face cancer or things are like a bad car wreck or these things because God's blessings will be upon me. Why? Because I invited them. I quit being just a spectator and I become a participator because I want to, I, I don't know about you all, I don't want to push an empty buggy back out to my car from Walmart. That doesn't make no sense, does it? I want to go get what I'm going to get and fill my buggy up and bring it back and put it in the car. 
It's the same way when we go get in our vehicles today. Isn't that right, Sister Wilhelmina? You remember years ago, girl? Made a believer out of you, didn't it? It sure did. I want to be able to push my buggy back out there with some stuff in it that I've gotten from the Lord that he's blessed me today. But, you know, the devil, like I said, would love to rob us of all that we have. He wants to take our joy. He wants us to be worried about the gas. He wants us to be worried about the world coming to an end. And I saw the other day a church was online and all they could talk about was all the doom and the gloom that's coming. You know, the Lord's coming back and y'all going to hell and all this stuff, you know, and I'm like, man, I don't need to hear none of that. I, I knew I was going to hell. You didn't have to tell me. I said, I, I need to get right with God. You know what I'm saying? I need to know what to do to get right with him in his eyes. You know, what do I need to change to make him happy? What is it that pleases him here today? You know what I'm saying? That's a question that needs to be asked. I, don't, I want to stop being just a spectator, but I want to change. I want him to change me. I want the love of God to be down inside of my heart. And I want to go to heaven one day, but I'm not going to do it if I'm just a spectator. Amen? But too many churches today, they're just full of spectators. You know, people come and, you ever heard someone say, well, Lord, the choirs, they sing so good today. And the preacher, bless, bless his soul, he prayed the best prayer I ever heard. You ain't prayed a lick, but he did. You know what I'm saying? Did y'all get that? You, you know, you got, that's where the light comes on. You know, he did some praying. We paid him to pray. Well, what about you? Do you do any praying? And this is where I was at years ago. I'm like, you know what? I didn't do any praying while I went there. I just stood there and listened. I enjoyed the music and all. It was pretty good, but uh, I don't know. I left the same way I got there. You know, I, I, I left... Still, still struggling with some things. You know what I mean? Struggling with my mind and doubt and all of these things. And so I made up my mind. I said, I'm going to go to church next Sunday and I'm going to get something from God while I'm there. I'm not going to leave empty-handed like I've been doing. I want to leave a changed man. I don't know. I began to read the Bible the other day about Jacob when he wrestled with an angel. When he got done wrestling with that angel, he would never walk the same again. You encounter the Lord, you get in touch with him and let him touch you. I'm telling you, you won't be the same person that walked in here. You'll walk with a different gait on the way out. I can promise you. You sure will. I know because I did. I don't know. I was thinking how much hope the Lord has given us here today that we have to live beyond the grave. How many want to live beyond the grave? I do. I don't know. I don't want to just, my dad always thought you just died and that was the end of it. I said, no, daddy, I don't think so. I said, I think our, our, our soul and spirit goes back to its creator. I said, I think once we're created and that spark of life has been breathed into us, uh, it's always going to be alive in one place or another. I said, so we would probably be well off to get on the right side of that and make sure that when we do check out of here, we're ready to meet our creator. So we have to ask ourselves sometimes some hard questions, you know. Where am I at in all of this? And where's my prayer at? The preacher prayed a good prayer. And that old lady over there on aisle two in the church prayed a good prayer. I heard her, but I ain't, I ain't been hitting on much, nothing. So I think I'm going to start praying. I think I'm going to start lifting up my voice like the Bible says. I think I'm going to start lifting my hands without wrath and doubting. I think I'm going to start participating in this thing because I want to leave with more than I came with. How many want to leave with more than you came with? I don't know. It doesn't cost us a thing what God wants to give us here today. He wants to give us this hope beyond our wildest dreams here today. The world out there, there's nothing but depression. People's having to drink to be happy. They're having to do all kind of things to be happy. And then they're still not happy. They're buying and selling as hard as they can go. They think a new boat's going to do it. A lot of people think 
to get just a new motorcycle, it'll do it. You know what I mean? That'll make me happy. That's all I need. Or if I, we just had more money. You ever, you ever said that before? We just had a little more money. I believe we'd be happy. Now, it, you, you just then begin to operate on a different scale. You just spend more and it takes more. But when you get him deep down inside of you and he's walking with you and you come to church expecting the day God's going to work on me, he's going to change me today. He's going to give me knowledge and wisdom from above today that I'm going to find the straight and the narrow way that leads me out of here. You know, in Matthew chapter 7, he said, few there be that would find the straight and the narrow way. You know, I don't know. I heard one of the congressmen the other day said his mama didn't raise a fool, and if they did, it was one of his brothers. And my mama didn't either because I can figure out that if the Bible says few there be that find the straight and the narrow way, that means it must be a difficult thing to find or you've really got to look for it to find it. He said, you've got to seek before you're going to find something. He said, you've got to knock before the door is going to ever be opened, right? And you've got to ask before you're going to ever receive. So you've got to go from being one that's just an observer to one that starts participating and asking, Lord, open my understanding to what's really going on in this world and the world to come and the life to come. I had a picture here been a few years ago, it was a one inch by one inch square. The Hubble telescope had reached out as far as it could go. In that one inch square, there was so many galaxies like the Milky Way, they could not number them all. Now listen, it's, I don't know how many light years it is across but it's about a billion, I think, across just the Milky Way. And we're talking galaxies far beyond that as far as that thing could focus. We, we in, we're in a place that we have no idea where we're at. And there's something that's created us that we have no, it's almost alien to us if we've never met him. But we're going to a place one day, he said that in my father's house were many mansions. And he said, and if I go, I'm going to come again for you. And listen, I'm excited about that because I don't have to sit at my house and be depressed and worried over gas and worried over the world and all this stuff and the Lord coming back. I want to participate and get right with him today. I want to make sure that I've got my stuff together. I want to make sure that I've opened my heart up to him and said, you know what? Here's all the junk in my life. Lord, help me with it. In John chapter 15 and verse 16, I was reading some time back. He says, ye have not chosen me, but I have chosen you and ordained you that you should go and bring forth fruit and that your fruit should remain. Listen to this. And that whatsoever you shall ask of my father in my name, he may give it you. Did y'all get the first part of that? It's not a coincidence that we're all sitting here today. We didn't just happen to get up today and come down to 7 Berkeley Street in Manning. God stirred us. Did you hear that? Our creator stirred us. Something drew us this morning and we got up and got dressed and we went to come to church. He says, he's chosen us. We've not chosen him. Matter of fact, he made the statement once. He said, there's many are called, but few are chosen. I want to be among the chosen here today. I want to leave today with my grocery cart full. I'm tired of leaving empty handed. The devil jipping me. Causing an distraction in the church. That's the reason I always sat on the front row. 
That way I ain't looking at nobody in front of me to distract me. They had nobody's kid down about three rows down in front of me that's got my attention and that I missed something important in God's word. I got on the front row. That way if anything moved in there, I was gonna get some of that. I didn't want it to bypass me. You remember that old song, Pass Me Not, Old Gentle Savior? Pass me not. I'm gonna be right on the front row, and if Jesus starts moving around in here, I want him to reach out and touch me. Matter of fact, I'm gonna reach out and touch the hem of his garment. I want to be like that old woman with the issue of blood. And he comes strolling by. I'm not going to just sit there and just be one that's observing what's going on. I want to be a part of what's going on. But I can tell you right now, the devil would love for you to leave empty-handed. He'd love for you to leave discouraged. He'd love for you to leave thinking about all the gas you had to spend to drive here today. And not to mention that offering plate that they run by, you know. I don't know how we're running the air condition over there. It just runs itself, you know. But I can tell you this much. The Lord wants us to be a doer of his word and stop being just a hearer of it. He wants us to start being a participant with these things. He wants to start changing and making things in our lives like never before. Just like Moses on the backside of a desert when that bush caught on fire and the Lord began to talk to him, it forever changed that man. And he led Israel out of Egypt. He sure did, even though he had a speech impediment. And he told the Lord, you know, I don't talk to plain." He said, you don't worry about that. You just go and lead my people. And that's what the Lord's trying to tell us today, that we just need to be like Moses and get into his presence and let him begin to change that dark and evil heart that's in us, you know, that's full of hatred that's everywhere in our world now. It's in our government now everywhere. In the news media everywhere, people are hating on one another like never before. Iniquity has abounded. And he said that in the last days, he said because iniquity abound, that the love of many would wax cold. And we're seeing that nowadays. More hatred and bickering and fussing and carrying on, killing. There's a mass shooting every day. And people beat all. They think the gun is what killed people. It's not the gun. It's the person holding the gun. And if they don't have a gun, they'll break a wine glass and stick you with that, whatever they can. Make a Molotov cocktail and throw it in your house. But they'll find something to kill you with if they're full of hatred and want to take your life. It isn't the gun. It's the hatred that's in the people nowadays. And that's where me and you need to be participants with this thing that we pray against this stuff. Do you know the church has the power to rise up and say we're not going to tolerate this? But the church sits quietly. All that's going on in our world. Have y'all ever thought about getting in your car and just riding through town and praying? Pray over your city you live in. Pray over the neighborhood you live in. Walk through the workplace at the plant you work at and begin to pray. Pray over your co-workers. Yeah, I believe if the people in the church did more of that where we see these nut jobs coming into these places and killing four or five people before they could subdue them in these different places, I believe prayer could stop stuff like that. But it's because so many Christians only observe and they're not really a participant. I don't know about you all, but I want to be able to bind the devil in Jesus' name. I want to be able to bind every spirit of darkness in Jesus' name. I want to give the devil a hard time. I want to pick a fight with him every day. I want to bind him up and aggravate him and just throw a monkey wrench into everything he's got going on in our world. He'd love to take us all to the gates of hell. If he can do it, he will if we stand back and let him. But if we're willing to stand up to these things and Worship the Lord in spirit and truth. I don't know. I'm remembering Acts 1 and 8 says that we shall receive power after that the Holy Ghost has come upon you. And he says, and you shall be a witness. A witness to what? That God's real. That he's alive. 
I don't know where Muhammad's at. I don't know where Buddha's at. But I can tell you one thing. I know the one that died and they buried him and he rose again three days later and told about it. That's the one I know and serve and I've walked with. And he wants us to walk with him here today. His hand is out today to grab you by the hand and take you places you've never been before. He wants to show you things you've never seen before. He wants to put in your mind things that you've never thought of before. Because the Bible tells us we need to renew our minds. We need to renew the way we think. And we need to stop looking at everything in the world with the eyes of the carnal spirit. But we need to start looking through things through his spirit. Filter everything through his spirit and watch things begin to change. God's looking for real men and women these days that'll stand up, take hold of the reins of Christianity and walk with him and make a difference. As the music comes, I preached the other week, I talked about what kind of legacy are you gonna leave behind? Y'all ever thought about that? What, what are y'all gonna leave behind? Well, they went to church, but then they, they, they didn't stay in for about six months and they fell out. And Every time we got around the kitchen table, it, the, the conversation was about everybody in the church or, or the neighbor down the street or something. Never was anything really positive said. That's the kind of legacy my people left behind. Is you you want to leave something like that? Or do you want to leave something behind for your children and your grandchildren? I don't know. I want to leave one of these for my grandchildren that's been marked up from all the Sundays I went to church and wrote down the sermon that the preacher preached and drew a line down to the scripture that he preached from. I want my great-grandchildren to have one of these that was mine, and they've got the directions in here on how to get out of this place and how we've got to yield ourselves to the Lord. We've got to give ourselves to him, and we've got to walk with him willingly. He ain't going to force us to do anything, is he? I want to be a vessel today that's willing. How many want to be a vessel today that, that's willing? And you want to leave with more than you came with? Why don't you stand with me today? I'm serious. How many want to leave with more than you came here with? I do. I don't know. I want to go home this afternoon and sit down and ponder the church service and the message that was preached and how I can apply it to my life, how I can change and be a better person, how I can serve him in a greater way, how I can please him with the life that I live, how I can make a difference and leave something behind for my great-grandchildren to follow if the Lord should tarry. I don't know. Y'all have heard me talk about it. My grandpa didn't leave me no Bibles. Great-grandpa didn't leave one either. There was nothing. Matter of fact, my own daddy didn't even leave me anything. My own daddy never sat me down and said, boy, you need to live right. There's a heaven and a hell. And you don't want to go to hell. You don't want to go to that place. My daddy never sat me down, talked to me about those things. We were just on our own, man. We were just drifting. But then we found him. That thing deep inside it draws every one of you and deals with you from time to time. Oh. That's when you come to church and you lift up those hands. Here I am, Lord. Don't pass me by, Lord. Here I am, Lord. Touch me, oh God. Touch my mind, Lord. Touch my heart, Lord. Touch my way of thinking, Lord. Oh, God, make a better person out of me, Lord. How many would say that today? Lord, I want to leave 
better than I was when I came, Lord. Oh, Lord, don't let me leave with less than I came with. Oh, would somebody close their eyes here this morning and lift that hand in the air and, and just say, here I am, Father. Oh, God, lead and guide me, Lord, through this life. Lord, make me a vessel, Lord. I may be beat up, Lord. I may be used up, Lord. I may be skinned up, Lord, from the world. But I want you to use me, Lord. Hey, he don't, he don't have no use for that piece of china in the china cabinet that never gets used. He's looking for that old beat up Tupperware cup that's been around for years, that's been gnawed on by the children. That's the one he's looking for, the one that's useful. He's wanting to add value to our lives here today. Oh. Come on. Y'all talk to him. Close your eyes. Begin to lift up your voice. Nothing to be ashamed of. Nothing to be embarrassed about. Oh, God, here I am, Lord. Lord, mold and make me into a vessel, Lord. At the altar where I run to rest, where I wait, resurrection oh. and the touch of your breath.
lift that hand and tell him. You'll be glad one day that an old preacher pushed you a little bit. by the hand, Lord. Usher us in to the other side, Lord. Life eternal. Oh, forever. We're going to be and dwell in the house of the Lord. Oh, what a day that's going to be. What a day that's going to be. Aren't you glad you come to church today? Look at here. That young man right there that's getting old. I met him by the car seats in Walmart. Probably about what, 1996, 97? It's been a while, hasn't it? It's been a while. We just happened to be standing there with him. That's what God's wanting to do with us on the car seat aisle in Walmart, witness to somebody. You know what? God's alive and well. Yes, he is, and he'll keep us. Yes, he will. Oh, thank you, Lord. Why don't we thank him right now for his word? We're getting ready to go. Thank you for his word. Thank you, Jesus. Thank God for the freedom we have here today. Yes. You may not 
think like I do, but this is the way I think. I've got the right to get down by my bed tonight and pray. You know what? This big boy is going to do it. I'm going to wreck the devil's day. And I'm going to get up in the morning and I'm going to wreck it again. Why? Because I've got the right to. And I'm going to exercise that right because we're free. That's right. We all have it. Oh, in Jesus' name, I appreciate all of y'all coming to church today, giving me something to do, somebody to preach to. I love all of you more than words could ever say. We give our lives many years ago to help you get out of here. I want to encourage you. I want to be there for you. If you need me, ring my telephone. If you need me to pray with you, whatever you need, I'll be right there. We're not going anywhere. As we get ready to go, we're going to pray and we're going to dismiss as they continue to pray over here. Let's pray right now in Jesus' name. Father, we thank you for your word today. We thank you, Lord, for the Bibles that we have, Lord. We thank you, Lord, for this building that we can come and gather in your name, Lord, and we can usher in your presence here today, Lord. We're so thankful, Lord, for that your words of encouragement here today, Lord, that we can leave with more than we came with, Lord. Oh, God, that you add such value to our lives. But, God, I pray that you would keep us safe and protected, Lord, as we travel the dangerous highway, Lord. I pray, Father, that if there would be any sickness in this room here today, that you would heal it in the name of Jesus right now. God, that you touch our minds and our bodies today, Lord. God, that we can have the joy of the Lord deep down inside of us as we get in our cars and drive off today, Lord. Once again, oh God, we felt your presence, Lord. We love you with all of our hearts, Lord. And everybody said in Jesus' name, amen. Lord bless you, you dismissed.